Thursday, February 19, 2014, and this is KBIA's Views of the News. Our weekly roundtable on media behaviors comes to you from the Futures Lab studio at the Reynolds Journalism Institute. I'm Amy Simons, and here with me are Missouri School of Journalism colleagues Mike McKean and Ernest Perry. There's an interesting post on our Lynx blog that I hope you'll take some time to go read. It poses some questions about local TV news. According to a Pew Research study, three-quarters of all adults get their news from local TV broadcasts. But the author asks, what if the news they're consuming just isn't trustworthy? What if, like this, it's simply a press release repackaged and sent out via feeds? Some people think the top story today is the big winter storm hitting the East Coast. Or maybe the big story is uh, the Sochi Olympics. But judging by local news across the nation, there's an even bigger story that's sweeping our country. It is 19 minutes past the hour. Welcome back, everybody. Those without a sweetheart this Valentine's Day may look to their smartphone or tablet to help direct Cupid's arrow their way, while those with a special someone may look to their mobile device to help them say, I love you. Those with a special someone may look to their mobile device to help them say, I love you. Those with a special someone may look to their mobile device to help them say, I love you. Those with a special someone may look to their mobile device to help them say, I love you. Those with a special someone may look to their mobile device to help them say, I love you. You don't need to hear any more to get the picture. Conan O'Brien produces a piece like this once every couple weeks, yet newscast producers are still putting this feed content into their shows without rewriting the scripts, and anchors are reading it. It's a practice called ripping and reading, and we're seeing a lot more of it. Even after the embarrassment of repeatedly, sometimes we see stations two or three or four times showing up in these things. Even after that embarrassment on late night TV, we aren't really seeing these practices change in our newsrooms. Why is that? Because as I tell my students, quite often, journalists are inherently lazy. And this is one of those those instances where if it's already it's already been written for you, it comes across very well, it plays to the audience, you're going to run with it. And, and it doesn't matter how many times you show up on Conan O'Brien or, or on, on Comedy Central or just name the show, they're going to continue to do it because it, it's, it's easy to do. It's just one of those things. And frankly, for good or for ill, uh, the largest portion of the audience is watching local television news, like most news outlets now, is still kind of skewing older. So the people that are seeing these bits on their local newscast are not watching Conan O'Brien. They're not watching Comedy Central. They're not the right demographic for those programs. So what's the risk for the station? Well, I'll tell you what one risk is. I mean, you're right. Uh, the, the Pew study shows that almost three quarters of Americans say they get their news from local television news. And there is a lot of good local television news content out there, but what the study also shows is that those folks don't watch for very long at any one sitting. And that's a problem in terms of loyalty. That's a problem in terms of being able to cover local news in depth. And when you run this kind of junk, instead of running more in-depth stories, maybe fewer stories but longer ones that are more important to the audience, you run the risk of eventually somebody's going to do that instead of you. Yeah, it's going to be, it's very interesting, uh, it would be very interesting to see whether or not people are actually seeing the story because a lot of these stories run toward the end of the mm -hmm. newscast. And by that time, most people have probably checked out, especially if they're there just to get the local news and the weather. By that point, they've already, they're so in tune with how the, the way in which news is, is given to them that they already know, okay, I can check out at this Point. The stuff I really, really need to know is going to be in that first segment. Then yeah. I'm going to get weather. Then right. I'm going to get something a little bit lighter. Then I'm going to get sports. And then I'm going to get the silly kicker t right. uh, kicker right. at the end. And everybody says goodbye and has happy chat. Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. And we've stacked newscasts like that ourselves in the past <laughs> in other jobs. And we know how that formula makes it easier for us to get our jobs done. We know that newsrooms are doing more with less, more newscast time the same or fewer numbers of people to fill it. So I get all of the arguments for why it's easier to do it that way, but I, th I think the gains are not going to be there for us in the long run. And I also think that the, what we really need to pay attention to is whether or not the, the canned news is, that's coming in is, is actually coming in, that it's verifiable, 
it's it's accurate, that sort of thing. Because there's a lot of it that's being sent in that, that they're using. And, and in a case like this one, it, it's about a phone app. It's basically nothing more than a glorified advertisement yes. that somebody's putting together and you're just throwing on the air. But when you start seeing the business news that way or the healthcare news that way, mm -hmm. then you need to really start questioning whether or not it's it's a glorified advertisement or it's really providing news and information that people can use. I'd like to okay, thank well. you all for joining uh, us and spending the last half hour with us. You can read more about all of the topics we talked about today, check out the Links blog under the Talk Show tab at kbia.org. You can like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at Views on KBIA. These are all great ways to watch and listen to our program again, to leave comments for us, questions, whatever, see previews of what we'll be talking about next week, and more. Our thanks to RJI's Travis McMillan for directing today's show, to Pat Akers for handling the audio. Josie Herrera is our associate producer. I'm Amy Simons. Be sure to join us again next week when Ernest, Mike, and I are back for another edition of Views of the News.